If you wouldn't mind, would you stay here just for three, four nights until I leave to go back to Michigan? I will stick with you till you leave from here. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you, Harris. I appreciate you so much. Wait, 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 wait. Stephanie, what did you say? I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you, Harris. She almost called Harris Ryan. And they continued on with the conversation as if it didn't happen. But hey, it's an honest mistake. If I moved on that fast to a man's cousin, I would probably confuse their names too. Just hours after Stephanie called it quits with Ryan, she invited Harris to the resort. And now he gets to enjoy all the perks that come with being her boy toy. Oh no, I'll take you upstairs so you can get a shower and freshen up before we go to dinner and drinks, okay? All right, no problem. Grab your bag Thank over you. there. So, just gonna make the most of the rest of my trip here in Belize. What else can I do? Enjoy the trip by yourself and not deal with these shady men. Stephanie has now gone as far as asking Harris if he would be open to living with her in Michigan. We'll get to his response in just a few. Plus, Rebecca is starting to grow suspicious of Zied after he suddenly tells her that they need to get married before Ramadan, which is in a few weeks. So if you, if I don't marry you quickly, you go home? Yeah. Hmm. Should she be concerned? Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Malicia. I'm gonna be honest, this week's episode was a bit slow, but there are a couple moments that we have to talk about. So let's go ahead and get into them. Kicking things off with our dear friend, Stephanie. As she was preparing for Harris to arrive at the resort, she revealed that she's canceling Ryan's visa to America. She also said that she doesn't miss him, but based off of the way she said it, it's kind of hard to believe. Ryan was someone I was gonna marry. I was gonna spend the rest of my life with him, but I miss my cat a hell of a lot more than I miss Ryan. I don't miss Ryan. I don't miss Ryan. I mean, who are you trying to convince Stephanie? The cameras or yourself, huh? Obviously, she is not trying to sit with the feelings that come with ending a three-year relationship. So to numb the pain, she got cute, put on her little lipstick purse, and strutted towards Ryan's cousin, Harris. Harris. Whoa. How are you? Oh my goodness. Middle of the night, I get a call from Stephanie. She told me she was going through some problem and difficulties with Ryan. So right away next day, get on the bus early morning, five o'clock, take about four hours to reach the city, jump on the boat, take about the next two hours to reach the island. And here I am. In a day's notice, this man took time away from his job as a farm worker to come see Stephanie. There are also some reports out there that he has a family of his own. So I know you're not supposed to assume people's motives, but this clearly looks like a money mission for Harris. Traveling six hours, they cannot be that good of friends. Ryan, he's crossed the line and it's over. It's over for good this time. He is a master manipulator. That's why one of the main reasons I told you, Stephanie, you're going the wrong way. From the first time I told Stephanie about it, I tell her, Stephanie, Ryan ain't the right guy for you, man. He's terrible. Well, damn, Harris, that was harsh. I don't know about you, but for me, it's kind of sad to see these two cousins just trash each other on TV. It makes me wonder what happened before Stephanie that turned them into such enemies. Is it just jealousy or did something go down? Whatever it was, at this point, Stephanie is just a pawn in the game who is well aware that she is causing an even bigger divide between them. You don't deserve someone to come and treat you the wrong way in life. You need someone to take care of you and be there at your side. Thank you. You and I have always had a connection. Close connection know? too. Yes, yes. So if you wouldn't mind, would you stay here just for three, four nights until I leave to go back to Michigan? I will stick with you you leave from here. I appreciate you. I, 
I appreciate you, Harris. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you all. Talking about Stephanie's storyline at times just feels weird because it's so extreme, very extreme. But it does remind us that you have to be mindful of who you confide in. Because as we see here, there are people that will take advantage of your weakness and use it for their come up. When Stephanie and Ryan broke up a year ago, Harris swooped in and slept with her. Now Stephanie called off her engagement to Ryan and Harris, once again, right there, waiting for his golden opportunity. And based off the preview for next week, it might be close. I've always thought, I wonder what it would be like to have Harris in the United States with me. I'm not ready to be over there with you, Stephanie. Going to America, I think I can do a lot better. I know Stephanie and the Americans, they are rich people. Wow. At this point, I don't even think Stephanie cares that she's being used. I don't think she cares she was being used with Ryan, which is unfortunate. Also, I know that Harris has somewhat turned into the villain in this situation. And although I don't agree with his actions at all, it is clear that he just wants a better life for himself, but he's chosen such a shady way to go about it. All right, enough of Stephanie. Let's move on to Rebecca and Zied. Rebecca has been working hard and Zied, he's been stuck in the apartment. So she took the day off to take him to this beautiful location where she hopes they can get married. Oh, horse, wow. Rebecca surprised me about the horse. That's made me so happy. I can't touch him or no? Yes, sir. His name is Pendragon. <laughs> the horse is so big and handsome, and the curve too, that's amazing. You took a picture? I did. I love the smell of horses. Yeah. You want to go for a ride? Yeah. <laughs> Despite everything going on in the world, today is all about getting Zied excited for planning the wedding. Now, everything was going fine until they actually started talking about the wedding. Rebecca opened up about this fairy tale experience she wants to have, taking this same carriage ride after they say I do. And Zied just shut down her excitement by saying that he wants to get married at the courthouse, which didn't have me concerned until I started listening closely to the rest of their conversation. I mean, I understand the court, but I just want us to have a good time, a beautiful wedding. Yeah, I understand. But I mean for married quickly. I think no solution, only marry you in the court. I get that the coronavirus is a new complication in our 90-day timeline, but I'm just disappointed that Zied is willing to settle so quickly to have just a, a regular courthouse wedding. So the excuse here was the coronavirus. But once they got inside and continued to talk about the wedding, the issue became Ramadan, which shocked Rebecca because he's never brought this up before. Ramadan, a holy month for Muslims, is in a few weeks. And according to Zied, they need to get married before the holiday begins because he's never heard of anyone getting married during that month. All right, look, seriously, I'm not gonna marry you before Ramadan. That's not what I want. What want me do? My visa finish after Ramadan in one week. My visa finish. If still the coronavirus problem and everything closed, what I do at this time? If not marry you before Ramadan, not in one home. All the day, I don't see you. What? I go outside or you Where? go in home. Where are you going to go? If you want this. So wait, you're telling me that I can't sleep in my own home yeah. unless I marry you before Ramadan? Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, if she never brought him to this wedding venue, when was he going to tell her this? I'm not sure if it's one of those situations where he underestimated how much a wedding means to Rebecca or if it's just a lack of respect. The moment Zied came to America, he knew when his visa was ending and he knew when Ramadan was starting. When you don't tell somebody important information like that as soon as you think of it, it comes off as if you're trying to be sneaky. 
And Rebecca loves Zied. I'm sure if he was upfront from the beginning, she would have no problem marrying him before Ramadan. But now she's triggered. The last thing I wanted to do was rush this wedding. The, the 90 days for me are very important because the last time that I did this uh, with my ex from Morocco, I married him really quickly and he became an entirely different person. But between, you know, the coronavirus and the Ramadan deadline, I don't know what I'll do. Next week, things get more intense between Rebecca and Zied because she's not budging and he's not either. I waited two years for you to get here and then because I won't marry you in two weeks, you're, you wanna go stay somewhere else. Yeah. For him to now say, well, you know what? If you don't marry me right now, I'm gonna go live somewhere else makes me feel like telling him go live somewhere else. Tell him, Rebecca, because he's acting as if you're the one who just dropped this life-changing information on his lap. The least he could do is look her in the face. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, I was actually rooting for Rebecca and Zied, so hopefully he's not up to something and they can get this together really quick. But in the meantime, to make sure you stay updated on all the latest news coming out the 90 Day Universe, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I'll see you next time.